So tell me about when you first were diagnosed at age 13, what were some of your symptoms? When I was first diagnosed, some of the symptoms were um, was losing weight, uh, urinating all the time, uh, terrible attitude. Um, it was a really tough time. I, my glucose was over 800 uh, and the target range is anywhere from 70 to 120. So it was uh, a long time living with um, that, that higher glucose level. and. Um, you know, probably two and a half, three months without knowing. Um, and it just, I think, goes to show that there's been so many strides made in awareness, uh, even in the 17 years since, since I was diagnosed. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to, to be vocal about it from the, from the beginning because I felt like it would be easier for me to live with the disease um, if I was open and honest about kind of what my experience was. And, and hopefully, you know, for, for someone else who is in a similar position, kind of trying to figure out how to navigate a life with diabetes, um, you know, me speaking about it could be uh, helpful in whatever way. And, and it's been uh, a crazy ride, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in good health now and, and keeping all my, my numbers in control. How did you manage it going into, like, your teenage years and you're on the road and, you know, yeah. you want to do things and try things and... I mean, Puberty alone is is a big uh, hurdle for for um, young people, and when you add diabetes into the mix or or an autoimmune disease of, of any kind, um, it can be it can be really tough. Um, and for me, it was just about trying to manage my lifestyle uh, with touring and and working as much as I was working at that time, um, and traveling and everything else, uh, while just trying to figure out how to manage the disease and and. Um, I'm very grateful to have had a, a wonderful support system around me, um, family, friends, and uh, an amazing set of doctors who, who really kind of were patient with me and, t and taught me a lot along the way. But, but most of it is just trial and error, and you just got to kind of figure out what works best for you. And, um, you know, I, I think once CGM came into my life and, and became a part of my, my management of my disease, um, things got a whole lot easier. And uh, I'm incredibly grateful, you know, to... to to be able to have this technology and, and be in a spot where, you know, I'm getting uh, readings, uh, you know, so frequently, and, and um, I think back to the times when I was I was pricking 10 to 12 times a day, and, and now you know within every couple of minutes I'm I'm getting a new reading, and uh, it just helps prepare for for each of those next steps and um, simplifies things a lot. So no, tomorrow you're heading off to go on tour on Broadway with your brothers. Yeah. Going to Broadway, yes. Yeah. How do you manage your diabetes when you're touring? Um, it really depends. It, it's it's no different than than being at home and managing it. Um, it's just about staying as on top of it as I can. And and um, you know I don't like the way it feels when my blood sugar is high or, or low. Um, so I do my best to stay within range. And um, and, and you know the long term effects of of managing your disease um, carefully and and. Um, as, as best you can, uh, you know, it's so much, you feel so much better, so that there's certainly benefits, and um, I think I just try to focus on staying as present as possible and um, taking whatever steps I can throughout the day to, to make sure that I'm, I'm, you know, in the best health I can be. So have you ever had your, um, your reader go off while on stage? Oh, quite a few times. I've gone low while being on stage, um, which, you know, is not to say that that um, I, I mismanaged something or anything like that, but there are just things that are unpredictable about this disease and the management of the the, the, the disease. Sorry, and um, it's it's just about you know staying on uh, on it as best you can. So then, what happens if you go if if your reader goes off on stage? What happens? Uh, well, for me, I just take a juice and um, try to you know stay as calm as possible, knowing that. Anything is, is kind of harder when you're working through a low glucose and uh, juice gets it back up. And my team also is right there side stage and prepared for kind of any scenario that, that, that could pop up. Um, but I, fortunately, I've never had something uh, really bad happen while on stage. So what are some like snacks that you always have with you? You mentioned juice. What are some things that you just have to always have with you? Uh, I carry juice with me. Um, I have a glucagon, which is for emergency situations. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it really is pretty simple. Um, I'm, I'm getting so many numbers so frequently that I, I'm able to kind of predict before something happens or, or foresee before something could happen um, and make those changes in real time. Where do you wear your reader? Uh, I wear the Dexcom 
on the back of my arm uh, or arms um, and uh, it's super low profile so you can't even really see it's there but right there. So do you change, do you change wardrobe based on? No, I think my whole uh, kind of thought is um, diabetes is a huge part of my life but it, it shouldn't take over my life in any way and um, you know I, I, I work really hard to not let it kind of interfere or, or change my ability to, to participate in certain things or, or even you know the, the biggest misconception would be about food and things that diabetics can and cannot eat. Um, I've worked really hard to sort of uh, set the record straight on some of those things in my own experience and just educate where I can but also advocate for those who, who are in a similar boat and, and have you know, we all have something, whether it's diabetes or not. There's something that we're affected by, and, and, you know, it's all about perspective and the ability to kind of power through. How do you change the narrative that diabetes is a obesity disease, right? That it's, that it's something that somebody did wrong? Uh, I don't think that it's just on me to rewrite that narrative. Um, and, you know, I, I approach all of this conversation knowing that, that it's, it's heavily nuanced, and, and it, it should be. Um, everyone's experience is their own, and, and um, the misconceptions surrounding the difference or similarities between type 1 and type 2 uh, are, are out of my control, personally. But I can be a part of a conversation and, and um, use you know, the platform that I have to raise awareness for these things. And so I think that you know, when people uh, feel like it, it's frustrating or, or disappointing that, that um, people don't quite know those differences, or even in some cases, uh, make it out to be specifically about one thing. You know, not taking care of yourself. You should have done this. Should have done that. Um, I think that the best thing to do, and and I've been in these situations, where someone says, "Oh, you can't have sugar, right?" And it's 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 far more complicated than that. Um, I try to take a deep breath and and just uh, kind of educate where I can, and just say, "Actually, it's this, and this is my experience." Um, and you know, it's it's not on any one person to rewrite that narrative. So when you were a teenager, how did you get your parents to not, and your brothers, to not be hovering all the time and worried all the time? Um, it was tough because they all care about me a lot, which is great. But um, and they want to, you know, be involved and, and be helpful. But I think for me, they they knew too that it was important that that it was my journey and that I felt uh, some sense of independence uh, with this thing that was really kind of taking over my, my life in a way. Um, I felt like I had more control if I was the one sort of spearheading the management of the disease. Um, and they've been incredibly helpful along the way, both you know my family and friend circle and, and now my, my nuclear family with my wife and um, her understanding of, of what to do in certain situations. And more than anything, it's just about the, the weight of decision making that I think type one diabetics have. It, it's, it's you know all about um, management and surviving and thriving and that thriving component is is the the thing of just having to think kind of 10 steps ahead and, and um, as long as you have a grip on that I think it's it's possible to, to thrive in it as well. So what's it like to be a, a new dad have you how has it changed your life? Uh, my life has changed in so many ways um, hard to name just one uh, but it's it's incredible um, the greatest gift and uh, feel you know very fortunate um, and and you know to have such a wonderful partner to to share this with and, and share this journey with so what's next you're you're doing this broadway run with your brothers and then what we're off to new york uh for this broadway run um it's gonna be fun we have some surprises up our sleeves but it's basically spotlighting a different album each night leading up to the last night which will be kind of the unveiling of uh, the album our new album um and you know, I, I started on Broadway. I actually performed in the very theater that we're going to be performing in this week um, when I was eight and nine years old uh, in Annie Get Your Gun with Reba McIntyre. So it'll be fun to go back um, 21 years later, 22 years later, uh, with my brothers and, and um, share this very special thing with our fans. Michaela, what questions you got? Yeah. So on the panel, you talked a little about. Uh, mental health in conjunction with type 1. Can you talk a little bit more about um, maybe some struggles you might have had and uh, how you've overcome them and how uh, those two are related? Yeah, so I think that um, mental health is is obviously a, a, a very important conversation, something that, that really affects every aspect of all of our lives. And when you compound that with uh, something like diabetes, they're, they're naturally going to be things and overlap um, with that. And uh, I wasn't completely aware of 
uh, the importance of my mental health journey. I mean, it's not only my career and life in the public eye, but also um, all that all that it relates to with diabetes. Um, and I think once I, you know, started therapy and, and started doing that uh, just a few years back, I saw, uh, you know, through those conversations, how much work I could be doing to um, improve, you know, my my life as a whole, both mentally and physically. And um, I think it's important, you know, for for all people living with this disease to 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 have this conversation and do what's right for them. But but also for for young men, I think it's a really important thing and something that can often be ignored uh, or overlooked. And so I, I'm happy to get to speak about it. And and you know, my my uh, journey with this disease has evolved at the different stages of my life uh, as it's kind of natural that it would. Um, but I think being aware of being aware of that and like leaning in is is important. And what do you see for the future of Beyond Type 1? What's next for that? Beyond Type 1 um, is an amazing org that I co-founded um, a while back. And, and uh, we have an amazing team working on a lot of initiatives, both for access and affordability um, and awareness, which is kind of our, our key um, focuses for the org, uh, along with, you know, uh, community outreach within the diabetes community and resources that are helpful for uh, for people living with the disease and their family members and friends, which I kind of spoke about on the panel a little bit today. Uh, but it's it's been wonderful to see um, the reach and the, the disruption that Beyond Type 1 has had, um, where, you know, conversation around diabetes was very clinical before and, and um, uh, honestly a little boring at times and, and this has been you know a great opportunity to bring an artistic touch and approach to uh, just kind of an eye level conversation um, around the disease and the management of the disease and obviously uh, initiatives like cure uh, access and affordability and um, awareness around CGM and other helpful uh, tools to manage your life with diabetes. What's your best advice for someone who is 13 and getting diagnosed for the first time? Um, best advice would be to take it one step at a time. Do your best not to get overwhelmed. Um, there's a lot of information that comes at you very quickly. And, and at the point that I was diagnosed, the internet wasn't really uh, a thing. You know, we, we, we couldn't at that point, uh, as easily as we can now with a phone in our hands, look up kind of, you know, what you should do in certain situations. And um, so I, I spent a lot of time just kind of learning and, and uh, not getting frustrated with myself or the process. And I would encourage people that are newly diagnosed to, to see it through that lens as well. Uh, we got to wrap up, but could I get a few 